Okay, so Apple just released their brand new M2 MacBook Air in the 15 inch model. I have the current 13 inch M2 MacBook Air in midnight. Absolutely love this computer. This is a great laptop for a lot of people. And you know what? A lot of people may be wondering why is Apple making this 15 inch MacBook Air? And I'm gonna tell you exactly why. It's larger, so you get a lot of things. You get a 15 inch display with the M2 MacBook Air. You also get more speakers. So you get the six speaker system. We're gonna talk more about that in a second, as well as with a larger chassis, you get better cooling and thermos. And there's something else to consider as well. In this category, like this, like I forgot what they call them, ultra books or whatever, from other brands out there, they also offer 15 inch variants of these super slim laptops. So it makes sense for Apple to offer their variant and also come for the market as they should, because these are great computers in my opinion. I love Mac OS and I appreciate it. So let's help you guys make a better decision when you get ready to purchase this. Let's get into all of the details, but what's really new? If we really look at the comparison from the 13 inch to the 15 inch, what are the differences? There isn't much because it's the same chip. So you're getting the same performance, possibly an increase due to better thermals and stuff. Things that we're gonna test when we get our 15 inch. I ordered a base model version too. It's just so I could talk to the base model thoughts out there. They love to say, all you need is a base model, which is cool. Same battery, you know, rating. That's super clutch that the battery is still giving us the same performance because you have a larger display and also a larger chassis, which allows for a larger battery. A1 for Apple to keep the user experience, at least on paper, the same. So let's continue to scroll down all of these super similar left and right, you know, uh, specs and so forth. Uh, display differences. Obviously, pixel counts are gonna be different due to the display sizing. Now, let's get into weight. Okay, 2.7 pounds versus 3.3 pounds. I mean, come on, we're talking about 0.6 of a pound of difference, not that much of a difference, and you get that increase in size, which for some is gonna be a plus, and others, they would prefer the 13 inch size because it's just a lot more you know, minimal and so forth. And I will be doing a physical comparison as well as performance comparison between this and the 15 inch coming up on the channel. You already know what to do, smash the sub button. now. A cool key difference I like to see, cause I'm into audio, is you get more of that six speaker sound system, which is a better speaker system. You know, get the little woofers in there. You know, you get a little bit more immersive of an audio experience. Apple makes great audio. Now, not to take away from the 13 inch, the audio on the M2 13 inch MacBook Air, I believe is good in my opinion, I like it. But the fact that it can be even better, I'm looking forward to because that six speaker system, that we've seen in other Apple computers, ah, I love it. So now we're gonna have that MacBook Air that will compete on an audible level. Shout out to Apple for that. But outside of these simple, small differences, everything else is pretty much the same. You know, A lot of people were rumoring this and rumoring that. That's why sometimes you can't get caught up in the rumor hype. I promise you, it'll set yourself up for disappointment. Now let's get into the real meat of this and that is the purchasing decision. Now, when you pull up to the page where you can choose your 15 inch uh, MacBook Air, you got two options. You can either get the eight gig 256 or the eight gig 512 gigabyte SSD. Now, personally, me, if I was gonna start over here, I would start at the 512 SSD because 256 gigs just doesn't cut it for me. But if it cuts it for you, that's perfect. You get to save a lot more money. You can come in at this beautiful price point that Apple has started at, which is 1299. 1299 for a 15 inch MacBook Air. W, Apple. Let's just say you wanna just do the 256 and you're trying to keep it there, but I would highly recommend, depending on your uses, if it's very simple, very casual, then you can stick to base model, get that base model price point at 1299, which is a W. But if you need a little bit more, if you're gonna be pulling on it from a performance perspective a little bit more, then I would highly recommend the 16 gigabytes of unified memory, because you cannot upgrade your RAM later. This is an area where people think that they can skimp out on, but then find out later the hard way. 16 gigs of RAM is always like that ideal, like that covers you. If you choose to get a little more pro, you wanna do a little video, photo editing and so forth, you can do it on the eight gigs, but you know, you're capped at that eight gig RAM, you know, what it can handle. And then you're gonna start reaching on swap memory a lot more than if you were to expand that RAM reach and uh, stay within your threshold. So I love the 16 gigabyte uh, RAM build. And ah, even though I'm not a fan of 256, if it works for you, it works for you. 
you coming in at fourteen nine nine. This is the thing. You know, it's easy to step up and you know <laughs> add up quickly in this uh, area because you start making upgrades. Now let's go back. Okay, you decide you want to start off with the five hundred and twelve internal. Now, if you're starting off with five hundred and twelve and you're just keeping it there, base fourteen nine nine is where you at. But if you want to add in a little bit more for performance, the 16 gigs, 16 gigs is the sweet spot. You can do a lot with 16 gigs of RAM. Um, a lot of, you know, softwares, even in the gaming world, like 16, well, it used to be like the base, but I think 16 gigs is the base start on a machine to give you enough headroom to feel like you can grow into it. But again, if you're not doing all that and you're just trying to keep it basic, keep it simple, base model 1299. That could be a W for you. Another beautiful thing about the 512 gigabyte SSD storage, you're going to get two SSD chips, which equals twice the speed as far as read and write speeds. So if that's something that matters to you, then I highly recommend you increase your storage size. Like if you are that concerned about the SSD speeds, then buy a larger SSD. Now I get it. Everyone wants to live in the past when things were just so much sweeter where you could get a 256 uh, gig, two chip MacBook Air and just have the speeds of the top ends and so forth. But we're not in that day and age, chip shortages and so forth are coming of the times. I'm not, you know, covering or nothing. That just is what it is. So if I were on a more like, I'm trying to build this device to be able to do more and have more, you know, 512 is a sweet spot. Make sure you got your external to offload to. You got your 16 gigs of memory. Um, I'm not going to say that I would recommend the 24 gigs unless you're just trying to go there and you want to have that headroom and you're going to be doing more and you're going to be getting into that realm. But see, when you add that, you're at 1899, you're starting to stomp on the uh, MacBook Pro territory, 14 inch, which is a thicker, heavier machine. The attraction to the air is it's air. It's thin, it's sleek, it's light. And it's what people buy these laptops for. They're not buying them to be pro machines. And the beauty of the Apple Silicon chips is you can do some semi pro get downs on these machines. Like they're more than capable as you guys will see. I'll show you guys in future, but I mean, everyone has shown you how great these chips are. Again, if I were going to buy more high end and I'm tapping on this 1899, I would question if I'm in that MacBook pro territory, like for real, for real. Because you're trying to do 24 gigs of memory, you might as well go, I, listen, keep it simple. Keep it to what you need. Don't get caught up in the hype and overspending. Base model, I love the base model entry price. I love the idea that if you're keeping it simple and you're doing lightweight things that you can get away at spending only $12.99 and get this 15-inch beautiful Apple display with the six-speaker system as well as the light thin, you know, the thinnest laptop in the world. <laughs> and they're well-built, premium quality uh, I love that entry point. And again, if you need more, get more. I always recommend RAM. Now, storage is based on how you store stuff. So know your habits and give yourself headroom. But again, once you start upgrading, see if I do the 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD storage, I'm at 1699. The price jumps, but it's all about getting what you want and what's going to service you. So focus on that number one and focus on your budget and staying within that. So I like the base model pricing. Uh, I grabbed the base model, even though for me personally, you guys already know I'm going to upgrade 16 gigs and I'm going to go 512 and I'm going to spend 1699 on a personal model for me personally. But this is for me to test and speak to you guys about base models and also the physical differences and performances from 13 to 15. And I'm looking to see what that 1299 gets you and what you can get out of that. So I'm super hyped about that. There's other products that Apple also announced, which is the Mac Studio. I did grab one of those because from a pro user perspective, as someone who is, you know, I'm using DaVinci Resolve, I'm pushing my machine, which I have currently the M1 Max, and I'm, 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 I'm hitting some bottlenecks over there. So I, I will be talking about the M2 Ultra on the channel as well. Uh, if you guys want a Mac Studio buyer's guide, I'll do that as well for you guys. This machine is sweet. I chose to take this M2 MacBook Air over my 14-inch MacBook Pro when I just traveled recently for a business travel. I went out to Cali, was doing some things uh, with a certain company, and I chose to take this, and I loved it. I loved it because, again, when you uh, put this alongside your backpack with camera equipment and so forth, it all gets extremely heavy. And being able to reduce some of that weight with 
in air, which is very capable of handling some of the things that you might want to do. Obviously, I can't do everything that I would want to do, but I can do a lot of what I typically do with that MacBook Air. I, I just like this price point. $1299 is amazing. And I think Apple also reduced the uh, 13 inch to 1099. Hey, listen, it's a great time for Apple right now. Apple Silicon has created great price points from Apple, great builds, great performance, great efficiency, great battery life, just a great computing experience and user experience. And I think that if you're into Mac OS or wanting to get into Mac OS, and if you're at this level, like the uh, MacBook Air level, and this is what you wanna get into Apple with for your first computer, I think you're gonna be well more than satisfied uh, if you need pro get pro and you can't get pro out of air and I don't care how much you try you can get semi pro but at the end of the day you you just can't turn air into pro there's a pro and there's an air for a reason pick and choose wisely